Welcome back to another episode of Soprano Theories. If you haven't seen the first episode, be sure to click the link on screen right now to watch it. Before we get started, make sure to click subscribe if you enjoy this content, click like, and click the bell to stay notified when I drop a new video. When we're first introduced to the character of David Scatino, we learn that he's a childhood friend of Tony's. The two have known each other for some time and their kids go to the same school together. On college orientation night, we can see Scatino is tense and anxious in the classroom. As he sees Tony head to the bathroom, he follows him. This is where we get a glimpse of Scatino having a gambling addiction when he asks Tony about the big game. So who do you like? I don't know, that guy from Bowden seems to be making some sense, I guess. I mean, a game tonight. Throughout the episode, this becomes a little more clear with Scatino asking to get into Tony's new game that he took over from his uncle Junior. I heard through the grapevine that you're taking over your uncle's game. You know, the big one. Grapevine. You know, if you listen close to that song, it says, believe none of what you hear and half of what you see. No, it's just, you know me. I like to play a little. A little. <laughs> Forget it. Tony politely turns him down and warns Scatino to stay away as he's a longtime friend of Tony's. David, you're a nice guy. I like you. Okay? But trust me, this game's not for you. We learn that both their kids, Meadow and Eric, are featured in the school play and have been chosen as partners. Eric and Meadow are both set to graduate that upcoming spring, and after orientation is all set and done, Eric nervously asks his father for $20. Yeah, I guess. Um, Dad, can I have 20 bucks? You like this. Eric is obviously nervous and the look of disappointment and anger rests on David's face as he forks over the $20. As we progress throughout the episode, Scatino's gambling problem becomes more apparent when we cut to a private game ran by Richie that consists of Artie, Vito, and of course, David. Here, we see David ask Richie for another dime, aka another $1,000. Hey. Rich, can I get another dime? Now, this makes David's total debt with Richie come to a $8,000 total. Are you sure? You're into me for seven G's already. Is that all? I'll make that back from Vito in an hour. Later on, we see Richie pay David a visit at his sporting goods store. Here, David hides his debt problems from his son and lets Richie know that the envelope is just $200 short. Hey Rich, that envelope's too sea shy. Richie doesn't take this stutter step news lightly as he knows this is the beginning of the end for a guy like David. You think I started this life 10 minutes ago? Guy hands you a light envelope. It's just the beginning. As David said in the beginning of the episode, he heard about the game through the grapevine. He pays Tony a visit at the executive game and begs to get in. What are the chances of me getting close to a game like this again? Come on, Anthony, let me sit in just once. But once again, Tony looks out for David as a friend and turns him down. I don't do business with outside friends. You understand. As a degenerate gambler is, David arrives with his pockets empty and asks Tony if he can spot him. Oh, come on, can't you float me? You know, short term, David. Don't say short if you don't mean short. Whole kidding aside. You understand what I'm saying to you? Yeah, of course. Hey, you don't have to explain business to me. It's here at this moment where Tony realizes the desperate state that David is in and how much of a degenerate gambler he truly is. Tony backstabs him knowing that he has the sporting goods store to his name, has Polly and Silvio slow playing everyone at the table, and will have David owing him $5,000 right away. Tony ultimately lets him in. Say hello to David Scatino. How you doing? Give him five boxes of ziti. Good luck. It's here during the game where we see the short rise of David. His rise is him winning this hand here with a flush. Here is the very short rise of David Scatino. Everything after this moment is a fall. As morning turns into night, David cannot admit that he lost and continues playing like the degenerate he is. Tony wakes up to the awful news that David is losing and stole 45 boxes of ziti aka $45,000 and lied about Tony okaying it. David's downfall keeps spiraling as Richie sees David at Tony's game. So now David owes money to Richie and now to Tony. After the confrontation with Richie, Tony speaks with David. But David shifts the conversation to their kids, trying to avoid the conversation about payment and thinking that Tony is still one of his childhood friends. How about what? A new daughter made out of Bowden. 
The next day, a fuming Tony pays David a visit at his store to collect his $45,000. David thinks he can avoid and get away with borrowing from Tony due to the fact that Eric and Meadow are friends and go to the same school. This really pisses off Tony as he thinks David isn't taking this as serious as he should. Our kids go to the same school together. <laughs> A tapped out David then pays Artie a visit, asking him for $20,000 for some breathing room. I need money. Money, Artie. Not much, just... I swear on my kid, I'll get it back to you before you even miss it. How much money we talk? It's 20000 Artie unfortunately cannot help and suggests that David files for bankruptcy. Here, David spills the beans to Artie that God, the person he is in debt to is Tony. After he's all tapped out of options, David returns home and sees that the only last option is to use his son's car as partial payment. Using off-roading and mud on the doors as an excuse to get rid of the vehicle, David has no other option but to get rid of his son's car and cough it up as partial payment to Tony. There's mud all over the doors! I warn you and warn you, Eric! I didn't I do warned you. you! He knows it's wrong, but what else can he do? It's truly sad that the gambling problem that David has has now made its way into his personal life. His son now has no car to drive to school with, and Tony then takes his car and uses it as a gift for Meadow. This is Eric's Jeep. Oh my god. Is this Alex Catino's Jeep? Yeah, but yours now. We now see that the gambling problem that David has, has now made its way into both the Scatino household and now the Soprano household. A grown man made a wager. He lost. He made another one. He lost again. End of story. It's even affected Meadow and Eric's relationship and their duet for the school musical. Fuck you. Fuck your gangster father. And fuck this. Now, four episodes later, Tony and Richie use David's store credit to buy expensive merchandise to pay off his debt. Tony and Richie plan to bust out Davey. A bust out is a fraud tactic commonly used in organized crime, where a business's assets and lines of credit are exploited and then exhausted to the point of bankruptcy. Ironically, a bust out can also be defined as a poker term, to lose all your chips and thus be eliminated from a tournament. And this is exactly what happened to David. Damn, Broke. Tony points out to David that the executive game was fair and David easily could have won. Now besides, if, if you would have won, I'd, I'd be the one crying the blues. However, this is certainly not the case with Polly and Silvio in on the game slow playing everyone else. Two boxes came out of my pocket. Here, we see David on the brink of suicide. He's lost everything, even his son's college tuition, and has really hit rock bottom. The irony continues between the Sopranos and the Scatinos as Davy's wife knows about his disastrous gambling problem but doesn't know about his large amount of debt that is due to Tony. While Christine and Carmela are out to lunch, she says, Carmela, my husband has a disease, a serious gambling problem. I am so sorry. Thank God the store's in my name. He can't sell the business without me or he would have gambled it all away by now. But sadly, this isn't true as the store is basically being gambled away and is on its last legs. What's truly sad to see here is that the water the two ladies are drinking, the Ramlosa water, came from David's bust out. Now I know you ordered the Pellegrino, but I want you to try this. I got such a deal on his Ramlosa. As we can see, the two are good friends and Christine introduces Carmela to her brother, Vic. Vic and Carmela are immediately attracted to one another. Vic is pleased with the introduction of Carmela and respects the ring on her finger. And as David's wife Christine says, the ring probably came off a dead person's finger, where we then cut to David holding a gun to his head. Oh, Mary's good enough for me. Who husband is doesn't matter, I respect the ring. Especially that ring, probably came off a dead person's finger. Vic is a widowed painter and Carmela engages him to wallpaper part of her bathroom. When the two are alone in the bathroom, they suddenly kiss. Carmela arranges for Vic to come alone the next day without his assistant so that they can talk. That night, Vic meets with David at a local bar, and this is where David confesses to Vic that he is in debt to Tony Soprano. Fucking Tony Soprano. Alright? Yeah. Tony fucking Soprano. It's a bust out. David confesses here that he has lost absolutely everything, even his son's tuition. And now, it's a full circle of events coming together. 
David's in debt to Tony, Tony is busting out David and giving these items that David is ordering to his kids like the fishing rod with AJ and Eric's car with Meadow. Carmela is falling for Vic, Christine's brother. David confesses his debt to Vic. Vic doesn't show up to Carmela's house and David's life and store is an absolute mess. When we last see David, he's trying to get every last ounce of coffee out of the coffee machine. This basically is a metaphor for his life. He kept trying to squeeze out every last bit of money on gambling in hopes of hitting it big. But sadly, it never happened. Just like there's never any coffee in the pot. David parts ways with New Jersey and out of all places, he heads to Vegas, like any degenerate gambler would do. And this is basically the end of David Scatino. If you enjoyed this episode of Soprano Theories, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. For more videos like this one, stay tuned to Soprano Theories.